Hello, hello, Anderson Oliveira here for Dinan Hero. Today, have with me today a little bit different recording at the end of the day, at the end of a Thursday. Scott and Joe. Scott, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm going to be the little bit smaller this this month because I'm in the Blue Bolt office in our in our, uh, our conference room here. Perfect. Joe, how are you, Joe? I'm great. Uh, happy summer. Oh, so good, so good. Having some humid and hot days and cannot complain about that. Something, something about a swimming pool I saw. Oh, I see. You saw that, my little fish. You saw my little fish there. Okay, good. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's start our dinner conversation. Not much happening, to be honest, uh, but we cannot... We cannot not mention the Dean and Connect that happened just about, just, I don't know, beginning of the month, a few, few weeks ago. It seems that people had a lot of fun. I'm scrolling through a few pictures of that event. A lot of fun. Uh, I could not find it, but there is a nice aerial shot of the entire group. We have to do those kinds of shots. In, in our in, in the North American events as well. Very nice types of shots, you know. Anyway, I cannot do a summary of, of that event because we're not there, so we just have some uh, hearsay information, hearsay things, but it seems to have been very successful with uh, some broadcasting from Channel 9 from Microsoft. There is a long recording of the one of... I think, I guess at the main room, and I'm not sure if it was split into sessions yet, but uh, but I, I recall Peter saying that that should be split out in smaller chunks. So one thing that I can, uh, I guess I can mention, which I saw some, a lot of comments and a lot of things going on is uh, some, you know, community members uh, talking about, you know, talking to Joe over there about... Um, Things that they would like to see done differently with the, you know, the... And this was very much around the number of pull requests that were accepted in the last release, which was more focused on, um, I guess, on, on some evoke. They were focused more on evoke, so not too many pull requests have been, I guess, approved. Is that, is that the term, uh, Scott, uh, to be said? Uh, yeah, I guess somebody... I guess the process is they get a, a pull request and then people have to review it. So there is time that that takes time, and then they have to merge it. Good. So so there there were some questions about, you know, things that need to be addressed quickly from some some from someone's point of view that were not addressed that quickly. So um, again, a lot of he's saying I don't want to dive deep into that because I don't have firsthand knowledge of things, but some interesting conversations around that and i'm gonna leave it like that hopefully either things will evolve and i have more information on future you know chats or things will die out and uh then dry out and that's it but again not much happened this month just a big a big I guess that kudos to, to who, who the group that was organized that has organized the dean and connect um yeah, I know that people went there. I know some people that uh, gave me some first-hand information about the event, and they, they just liked it very much. There's a lovely location, as you can see by the photos, with people getting, some people getting wasted, but hey, that's part, isn't it? Yeah, I, I am one of the people who watched a fair amount of the Channel 9 stuff, and uh, very good talks. Uh, some, I'm trying to remember all of the details, but yeah, I made notes of things that I wanted to go back and uh, look at again about uh, different different ways of doing things in DNN. Uh, and I watched uh, Mitchell Sellers talk, uh, which is always fun, uh, and. Uh, and I think I watched a good bit of Daniel Mettler. Uh, uh, so it was, uh, it, it was pretty good. I, and couple that with the uh, 
pictures of the aerial photography, and I certainly am jealous of the people who got to go. Got it, got it. Okay, okay, okay. So that's it about the DN Connect. Um, again, not much aside from that on the month. I just saw three blog posts, and I'm gonna ask you a question. Three blog posts, two of them from the same person. Guess who that was? You have one chance. Uh, that that you, you have to start asking tough questions. No, that his company starts with an S. Uh, you know, it starts with a number. Oh, does it? I thought it, it doesn't start with the numeral two. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so, okay. So three blog posts, two from the new metaler and one from Ash Prasad from Dean and Corp. I'm going to start with the one from Ash. Ash was just talking about a new update to the security analyzer tool because of that hacking that happened a few weeks ago that was was uncovered there were some updates done to the security analyzer tool so it's now checking for things that were the the, the, the types of hacks that were done on that on that that were uncovered so you may want to consider installing that security analyzer tool. It will check for file integrity to make sure that the default.spx have not been compromised. Actually, just yesterday I came across yet another client with that file compromised with a lot of porn websites and links inside their default.aspx file. Anyway, that's an update uh, from Ash Prasad from Dean and Corp. What else we have? Another blog post here. So, so this is actually a video from Daniel Mettler. And I think it's the one. No, actually, this is not the one from the event from the Indian Connect. This is uh, a video where he comes up with, with some interesting comments about different ways that moving forward uh, the different potential ways that move forward the .NET Core, the new .NET Core 1.0, I think that is, that's the current version, could be incorporated into DNN without a major overhaul of the entire platform and we could start to build modules and components that are very much client-based, SPA type of development, which could get us ready for eventually eventually converting or not convert but you know writing a dnn on on dotnet core again uh, you may want to check that out to see exactly what he's talking about but as usual he has he has very thoughtful opinions so it's more of an opinion of where he sees that things could be moving forward within the DNN, the DNN space and adapting to .NET Core, the new .NET Core. Any, any anything from your from you guys? I mean, any any comments on that, uh, Scott? It just just to clarify, .NET Core or Core CLR is the the new the well the open source dot, uh, core piece of .NET that can potentially run on multiple platforms, not just Windows and uh, like Linux. And what's different about it and what's significant about that, about getting DNN to run on it is um, the .NET Core will not, so the Core CLL will not support web forms. And that's the significant part. And this is nothing new. We were just talking about it before we started recording. And, I don't know if you remember, but in 2014, the DNN con, the last one that we had, I think in Palm Beach, Joe Brinkman, a, a talk about that, not a talk, it was actually, I think it was either a keynote or one of, one of the big assemblies, and he talked about that when it was first kind of being, uh, when Microsoft was first starting to communicate about it, and that was a big thing, and, and that conversation sort of died because, um, you know, it was a little early on for Microsoft even to be talking about it, and and we had big things to, to start up with DNN, which was getting to DNN 8. In fact, I don't know, 
it, it, it's amazing to me that we've been doing this monthly chat. I think we've been doing it for over a year now, maybe even two years, because we actually talked, yeah, we actually talked about it in one of our chats following that DNN con where we were talking and we were talking about DNN 8 being potentially that core CLR version. And of course, you know, that, that did fall off the table, not because of DNN, but because of, you know, it was too far out to do that. But that conversation is now resurrected. We were talking about DNN connectors and, and Daniel Mettler and people in Europe are starting to talk about it because it's something that people want, you know. If DNN can come out with a core CLR version, you know, it, it will be one of the first CM, you know, .NET CMSs in the market. To do that, you know, Sitecore is a giant animal, Episerver is a big animal, even Sitefinity, uh, but, you know, smaller CMSs like Mbraco, if they get to it first, you know, they might take away some of that share, but imagine running DNN on Linux. Uh, but the, th the, the big thing about that core CLR is, doesn't support web forms. It only supports ASP, MVC, SignalR, and Web API. So you know, moving, move, I think DNN eight took a step forward in that and removing some of those Web Forms dependencies. But it's still a Web Forms platform. Um, but you know, uh, you, moving to, and a lot of its Web API and a lot of its Spa now, which is great. But moving off the Web Forms core is going to be crucial, and that will be a, a, an entire fork of the platform. I see. You said the word. You said. I was trying to avoid saying that word, but you said that word, so I'm gonna. Well, well, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a dirty word. Even even DNN Corp has acknowledged that in order to support the core CLR, the product would we'd have to have two parallel versions of DNN, you know, because it's going to take a year at least, if not two years, to develop this. And even once you develop it, not everyone's going to be able, it's going to break compatibility. So, I mean, even when Joe was talking about it two years ago, the acknowledgement was we'd have to have two parallel versions of DNN um, in order to keep everyone supported. And some, some would argue that uh, DNN Azure is already uh, a parallel effort, right? You mean the Evoke On Demand? Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's um, what I meant. It's it's not. I don't think it's a fork. I think it's a. I've been looking more at the product. We've got a couple clients on it now, and I, and actually Chris Patera just sent me the uh, the the architecture diagram to it. He said I could share it, so maybe we'll do that next month. But but it, it is quite an architecture. I I didn't realize how much. I thought it was just uh, in, you in, installed Evoke on on an Azure web app. But no, uh, I mean. It's a, it's pretty involved. The file systems at Azure, it's the search services have moved out. So, um, but I don't think it's a fork. I think it's just an ex, some extensions and and a, probably maybe another build. But yeah. Okay, okay. But again, the F word was pronounced out there. <laughs> <laughs> Title of the video: Scott dropped the F bomb. Yeah, yeah. One more time. Maybe that's the headline. Maybe that's the headline of this episode. The F bomb. Love it. Love it. Anyway, uh, moving forward here. So again, check out uh, Daniel Metal's recording. And, and... Uh, let me let me let me just say something about Daniel Metler. I spent uh, Thursday, Friday, part of the weekend, and Monday uh, again with. Uh, the Too Sexy module, and it had maybe been a year and a half since I had dug into that, and I was several major versions behind, I think. Uh, I have absolutely no experience about building big stuff with it, but to build little stuff and the stuff with structured content that you can then turn over to a very non-technical person to start entering information and, and making nice displays. Uh, once again, I was impressed by, by what is there. Uh, so it's, um, there's a bit of a learning curve and I did a bit of learning uh, when I got a call Thursday that said, we need to have this done and we need to make it live on Monday, can you help? 
couple of hours, right? <laughs> but uh, very, very useful uh, tool once you get your hands around some of the things that are there. And I can, I'm probably com competent to speak about 15 or 20 percent. The stuff that Daniel talks about, uh, I haven't even gotten close to yet. I, I have the feeling that eventually uh, DNN will be a plug into two sexy content, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, moving on. And, and actually, you're going to move on to an, yet another video so, of Daniel so, Metal. So, so would, that, would that be a fork of two sexy content? <laughs> let's, see, let's leave that for words <laughs> to, to another chat. Let's, let's check on, on that for in a, in a month's time frame. Anyway, another video here from Daniel Edel. Now, this video is a straight, it's straight from his presentation from, uh, from DNN Connect. And he talks, it's, it's not that the other one is not good, but this is one, this one is, is more about project and how, beginning of the, the, the video is how he approaches new projects with clients, how he works with new clients, for, with clients for doing mock-ups and his process, and then he he quickly moves towards, guess what, to sexy content, and so a, a nice, a nice um, video here about developing agile, rapid DNN apps and spa modules. The new metal again, but that's it. That's all about uh, the new metal again. Took us half of our show. <laughs> anyway, um, quick one here. I just came across, and this might be basic for most of us, but I think it's it's uh, it's an interesting six points here that engage software. They they send out a a little guide of, of, of about six pages that talks about six issues to avoid when upgrading to DNN 8. Nice uh, PDF, very friendly and very consumable. So here's the link, fill out the form and get those six issues. Not that many, it's really around skinning and what was removed and some of the mods that were removed, but again, in a nice digestible way that uh, a company like Engage would put together. So the link is here. Guys, you can stop me at any time if you want to comment, okay? Uh, Scott, we have mentioned that last time, but I'm just gonna say that it's live, which is your last video set, Spam Module Development in DNN 8. It's live, it's there. No, yes. for the DNN Hero subscribers. What again? Just uh, a two, uh, one minute thing, Scott. Um, what what people will find there? Oh, in the spa module tutorial. Yeah, uh, I think we talked about it last time, but I, it's probably. I mean, it's probably the best spa module tutorial that exists right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it, yeah, it, yes, no, but it is a good tutorial, it's a cool, it's a restaurant module, uh, it goes over what I did, I, I presented it in, in part in, in the DNN8 training when I, at the Baltimore conference, but uh, more in detail and focused on the spa template and, it, it, you know, the restaurant module, it's a pretty cool piece of sample code and it, it's got an uh, image uploader, a file drag and drop image file uploader and some other nice goodies for people to, you know, steal and implement. Good, good. Okay. One more thing before I let you guys go, but, uh, and this is a bit of a filler. I have to say it's a bit of a filler because I said, you know what, our talk is too short today. So I have to fill this a little bit more. So I take the problem, what I'm calling the uh, problems from hell. Uh, I pick the problem that we have solved this past week on Deskball. I'm going to demonstrate that problem. This is a DNN 7, 711. Whoa, what a number. 711. DNN 711. DNN 711. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a relatively old, but 
client hadn't upgraded yet. And it's not a bug on DNN, but it's a bug in his environment. And I can, I, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate that. But line, what has happened is that if you go to modules, and this is a copy, this is a copy of the problem, not a copy of their site. This is just an out of the box DNN 711. So if I go to modules, modules and click on add existing module, by the way, the point is, the troubleshooting aspect of this. This is not about showing DNN 711. This is about showing how we went about troubleshooting that can be useful to you as well. If you're trying to troubleshoot DNN, you know, on, on different circumstances. So I just click on add a new module, add existing module. When I click on the drop down of pages, there's just, and you guys cannot see that, but there's just the little loading and loading and loading and loading. It's, there's nothing loading here. So you can wait forever. No pages will come up. Now, how did we go about, and that was after an hour and a half trying to sort this out. How did you come about getting to know what was happening here? Well, with that problem, usually there is some sort of a client side type of signal that will give us a clue. So the first thing that I've tried to do, we've tried to do here is just on Chrome, go to F12, which you can see the, 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 the console and see if there is any problem over there. And I can see a problem here. I'm not sure if, it, if this is about that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to refresh the page once again. So the console gets cleaned up and it shows the console again, I'm just gonna, go back again to modules at existing module before I click on the drop down I'm gonna clear just to make it make it more to make it more clean I'm just gonna clear the console and I'm gonna click on the drop down so as you can see as soon as I click there there is an error that a JavaScript error that shows up there and there is a JavaScript file I'm just gonna open up a little bit more space here and it shows the line that is throwing the error. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, because again, I'm using uh, the dev tools of Chrome, I can put a breakpoint over there. I will now refresh the page, click there again. And because I put a breakpoint, the code should stop right there so I can debug a little bit what's going on there. So I'm going to refresh the page and go back there again, existing module. When I click, now, as you can see, the, the the code, the JavaScript code has stopped right there because I put a breakpoint. Now, if I if we look around, and again, I'm 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 fast forwarding here our entire troubleshooting. If if I have a look around, I'm gonna see that model data is undefined here. But if I look at model, which is a JSON object. If I look at model, you can see that data has a capital D and the data in the code has a lowercase d. If I just copy that little model data and if I go to the watches, I can see that data lowercase is undefined, but data uppercase, that's the correct object. So, what ended up happening is that just as a temporary solution, we have just changed this data here from a lowercase to an uppercase, and that has solved the problem. Well, what I'm trying to get at is that the dev, uh, the, the Chrome, Chrome dev tools are very useful to troubleshoot things that, that are not server side related. They are very good on helping troubleshoot client side problems like that, like JavaScript problems. Any case, just wanted to, to uh, end with that. Guys, do you have any, any, I don't know, any tricks and tips that uh, you want to share with people? Since you mentioned that, <laughs> uh, I think the last time we got together, I was moaning and groaning about some custom modules that had been built by someone for a client and they had neglected uh, to implement searchable uh, 
in those modules. And I did, so I had to go and recover those modules, get the source code, dig in, uh, build in uh, searchable into those modules. Uh, the modules had not been built with any particular template system and, and the whole ball of wax. It was, but I, I got all of that done and basic, basically uh, one of the module, one of the modules, you give it a role on your site and it produces a gallery of photos and information about the users who are in that role. And this is for a, a company and they have, you know, the management team, the technology team, the accounting team, the payroll team, et cetera. Well, after I was all done and the site was indexed, five of the six pages you could search for people on those pages. The sixth page, none of the people appeared. And it turned out after, yeah, I did everything I could to, and eventually just broke down and brought a copy of the site down locally, hooked up Visual Studio and started the debugging process. One of the people on the sixth team, uh, their profile photo was stored as a, lit, as a lit link click rather than a file path, you know, a URL. And the code in Searchable assumed that you were getting uh, a URL. And so the lit click I can't say that today, the link click broke it. Solution, short of, you know, making the code bulletproof, was I downloaded the photo from the user's profile and re-uploaded it. And it was stored with the URL. And uh, so I've got it working, but I postponed fixing the prop, you know, hopefully they're not going to change too many pictures on me soon. And we have two happy ends, happy ends today from uh, two store problems from oh, one, one One and a half, one and a half. <laughs> uh, Scott, Joe, I think that's it enough. I mean, if we have any survival, any survivors that are coming to the end, I mean, tell me, tell me, I'll, I'll challenge you. Let me know if you, if you got to this point of this video. <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think the good news is there's supposed to be a release of DNN in early to mid-July. So hopefully our next get together, we can talk about that. You know, something will have changed uh, in the DNN world that is worthy of some conversation. Okay, okay, so uh, guys, yeah, that's it. Um, thank you very much, Joe, Scott. Have a good, you know, midsummer there, and we talk at the end of July. Yeah. See you next month. Yeah. <laughs> Take care.